There's this big mountain, see, a mile high at the end of the universe. And once every thousand years, there's this little bird. What little bird? This little bird I'm talking about. And every thousand years... The same bird every thousand years? Yeah. Bloody ancient bird, then. OK. And every thousand years, this bird flies... Limps flies all the way to this mountain and sharpens its beak. Hold on. You can't do that. Between here and the end of the universe, there's loads of... The angel waved a hand expansively, if a little unsteadily. Loads of bugger all, dear boy. But it gets there anyway. How? It doesn't matter. It could use a spaceship. Crowley subsided a bit. Yeah, if you like. Anyway, this bird... Only it is the end of the universe we're talking about, so it'd have to be one of those spaceships where your descendants are the ones who get out at the other end. You have to tell your descendants. You say, when you get to the mountain, you've got to... What have they got to do? Sharpen its beak on the mountain, and then it flies back. In the spaceship? And after a thousand years, it goes and does it all again. There was a moment of drunken silence. Seems a lot of effort just to sharpen a beak. Listen, the point is that when the bird has worn the mountain down to nothing, right, then... Aziraphale opened his mouth. Crowley just knew he was going to make some point about the relative hardness of birds' beaks and granite mountains and plunged on quickly. Then... You still won't have finished watching the sound of music. Aziraphale froze. And you'll enjoy it. You really will. My dear boy, you won't have a choice.